What's up guys, today I'm gonna show you 20 things you may not have known that you can do in Apple Motion. I guarantee you're gonna pick up at least a few tips in this video. And if you're newer to Motion and you really wanna get a great handle on it, check out my course, Motion Launchpad at jenjager.com. But for now, let's just dive right into these 20 tips. Let's first start with the canvas. All right, here we've got an empty canvas. Now, if you didn't know, Motion does offer a grid overlay to kind of help you space things out. But what you may not have known is that you can resize this grid to your personal specifications. Up in the Motion menu, just hit Preferences, select the Canvas option, and now we can change the grid spacing. Next up is making sure you have the best clarity in your projects. Let's say you had a piece of text like this that you wanted to bring way forward in Z space. You ever notice the edges start to get a little bit jagged here? Head up to the top right of the canvas and under the render menu, under quality, select best. There you go, perfectly clean lines. Next up is this great hack for resizing your elements. So we've got this circle here. If I wanted to resize this circle, I could just grab the edge of the wireframe, but it's really easy for me to distort the circle by doing that. I'm gonna hit Control Z. Now, if I hold down the Shift key, you may know that you can retain the proportions of that circle, but watch this. If we hold down Shift and Option together, I can scale up but keep that circle dead center in my frame. What about if you wanted to get a really good close-up look at your project? You need to get into what's called player mode. All you have to do is either hit this button at the bottom right of the canvas or the shortcut for this is function eight. Now we can see our animation full screen. All right, our next set of tips is down in the timeline, but before we get to that, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Now down here in the timeline, if you just wanna move an element frame by frame, you can use the nudge command, just select that element and then hit the command key and the right or left arrow to nudge that element frame by frame. Did you know that you can see audio waveforms in motion? Here's how you do it without expanding all of the elements in your timeline. Just make sure you've got the audio timeline open and grab the edge of your audio layer and expand it. Now we can see those waveforms. Speaking of audio, let's say you had a voiceover and you wanted to add a pause between two sentences. Just select that clip in your audio timeline, head on up to edit and select the split option. Now you've broken up that voiceover into two separate parts and you can grab them in either create space or close up gaps. Now let's talk about working in the keyframe editor. If you don't see the keyframe editor, just click these three diamonds at the top of your timeline to reveal it. And you can see that we have this element here that's got a lot of different keyframes applied to it. If you have a lot of keyframes on an object's parameters, but you really just wanna focus on one particular property you've animated, use this dropdown to view just those properties. Here's another really cool feature in the keyframe editor called the sketch keyframes tool. Use the dropdown to view just the keyframes for a particular parameter. In this case, we're gonna go position, and I'm gonna uncheck the Y and Z position so I can just focus on the X. Now I'm going to enable that keyframe sketch tool by clicking on this icon, and now I can actually draw keyframes freehand here in my keyframe editor. My next set of tips is up in the project pane. The first one is one I picked up from my friend Mark Spencer over at Ripple Training. Thanks, Mark, for this one. This one is about dragging colors in the project pane. If you have two shapes in two different colors and you decide you want them to be the same color, just drag the shape with the preferred color over the other in your project pane. Now they're both yellow. Here's a different way to duplicate layers instead of right clicking or using the Command D shortcut. You can hold down the Option key while you click and drag an element to duplicate it, just like in Final Cut. Here's a great tip for disabling multiple layers in your project pane. Normally you disable a layer just by unchecking the box next to it, but if you had a bunch you wanted to disable, just select the lot of them and then just uncheck one box and they will all be disabled. Let's talk about zooming in the project pane. If you have so many layers in your project pane that you actually have to scroll up and down to see them all, try making all of those layers smaller. Just click on this zoom icon here and use the slider to shrink it down. What if you feel like you have too much detail in your project pane? You can customize your layers columns. Just head up to the view menu, navigate down to layers columns, 
and disable each of these columns that you want to get rid of. The preview gets rid of the preview thumbnail. The opacity gets rid of the opacity slider. And you can also hide the blend modes. Here's a workaround for masking text in motion. You can see if I select the text in my project pane, the masking tool is disabled here below my canvas. Here's what you're going to do. Just right click and group that text into a group all by itself. Now the masking tool is enabled and you can mask out that text. All right, next let's head over to the inspector for a few more tips. Did you know you can apply behaviors to filters? So you can see I've got the twirl filter applied to this image. If I drop down here on the twirl value, I can add a parameter behavior. This time I'm going to pick overshoot. And now I've actually animated a filter. Next up is custom color palettes. If you have a client that you work with all the time and you want to keep their brand colors handy, you can create a custom color palette. Let me show you how. Just make sure that you have their logo pulled up and use the shape tool to draw a shape. In the inspector, head on over to the shape tab and use any of these color swatches to color pick the colors from your client's logo. Now double click on that color swatch, head over to the color palettes option and then open this menu here and select new. Give that first color sample a name, then use the eyedropper to grab the next color and hit the plus sign. Then go back to this menu and hit rename and rename that color palette to save it. Now, anytime you're working with that client, you can just access that color palette and all the colors are there. Next up is dragging colors in the inspector window, just like we did in the project pane. If I wanted this logo to be entirely blue and get rid of the green, I would just apply the colorize filter. Now, when I remap the blacks, I'm going to make it blue. And then to the whites, I'm just going to drag that blue color swatch to the white. And now all of it is blue. All right. The last two tips are outside any of these specific windows. The first one is the alignment tools. The alignment tools come in so handy when you're making something like bullet points like these, and you want to make sure that they're evenly spaced side to side and top to bottom. I would recommend getting them generally where you want them to be, and then just select all of them in your project pane, head on up to the object menu, go down to alignment, and I'm going to align the left edges. Now they're all perfectly aligned on the left side, but we can do more. I'm going to keep all of those layers selected in my project pane, go back up to object to alignment. And now we're going to go to distribute tops. And now they are all perfectly spaced. This is such a great tool. And number 20 guys is that you can customize the toolbar at the top of your UI. So just right click on any one of these buttons here at the top of the user interface and select customize toolbar. Now I can actually click and drag all of these buttons anywhere I want them in my toolbar. I can close up the gaps that are naturally here. I always leave mine on the default because I do these online tutorials and I don't want my viewers to get lost. But if you wanted to push those guys around, you definitely could. So there you go. There are my 20 things you may not have known you could do in Apple motion. If you really want to dive deep into Apple motion, make sure you pick up motion launchpad at jenjager.com. I picked out some other videos though. I know you're going to love. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again.